you're operating, I feel like within, you're operating at the top of your bubble. And then by bubble, I mean, there's a specific lane on YouTube, which you really tap into. And there's also another lane, which is like Florida. I feel like in Florida, you're like Rogan. Like when I was walking around after doing your pod, everybody's, oh, I just saw you on PBD. Oh, just, and that was the same thing after I did Rogan, like the first time, just walking around. People be like, oh shit, I just saw you Rogan, et cetera. And, but I feel like what happens is every time you bubble out of that, right, you're gonna get the scrutiny of the casuals, right? The people who don't really know you, don't know your experience, don't know your story, they start hearing about you and they're gonna have resentment or animosity for your opinions that are different. And then they start attacking you for the things you said. And you said, some people would go very wild things. Some people would also say that's very rational, your take, right? Depending on your like politics. But I feel like when you offered Tucker the 100 million, right? That was outside of bubble. Did you feel some heat after that? Oh, absolutely. Big time, right? Absolutely, it was what, great. what did people say? Oh, but you let, like it. Listen, you wanna I, dance. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my God, I can't even describe it to you. Like. I get excited when I even think about the, what that's gonna look like. You know, look, for me, uh, everybody fights in a different way, okay? There's different styles to fighting. Uh, you know, when, when you have a fighting style where, you know, Larry Holmes versus Ali versus, you know, you know, uh, all the Ken Norton versus, you know, Foreman versus, you can go and look at everybody. So it's a different style on how they would fight, right? I think in this world of communication, there's a different way to fight and deliver your message, yet stand your ground, but at the same time, maintain a relationship with the other individual. That is an art. It's not easy to do. It's very hard. Mm. And the way you do it is by, I think what is unattractive is the following, is when you're 100%, I'm right, you're wrong, yeah, you're yeah, an yeah, idiot, yeah, you're yeah, a moron, yeah, and yeah. some people do it that way. Yeah. I don't think you're opening up the door to want to have that exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if there's an opportunity to say, listen, man, find some, leak some argument. What yeah. do you think? I yeah. love that you do that. Yeah, That's tell a me. Very cool thing. Maybe I'm off. Yeah. Tell me you, where I'm off. I'm okay with that. If I can compliment you yeah. a bit more, not only do you bring on people that were going to disagree with you, you don't bring on like punching bags from the other side that you could just bully in an argument. You bring on smart people who make great cases. And I think that's really cool and rare in this space. And going off what uh, Andrew said about you get hate from the general audience that doesn't necessarily know you, how would you describe yourself? To them or to, to who? To, to the audience? Everyone in general. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 I think it has to do with how, how long, like for example, I'm asking him about the story, okay? The, the, the unique story of this building next door, right? Mom, how he grew up down the street, how far, the bike, they don't want him to ride the bike because he goes the other way, October 30th, birthday, 40, family, yesterday's exchange in text. I'm curious about this guy as a product, right? I'm curious about him as a human being, but he didn't become who he is today because of what I've consumed of him the last five years. I wanna know what prompted this guy to be here. Unfortunately, in America, too many times our judgment is on who this person is. Chelsea Handler makes this video, perfect example. Chelsea Handler makes this video calling out Adam, one of our guys. And he, he, she says, well, look at this guy, Alpha. Trust me, you are definitely not an Alpha. He gives me the SDE energy. And trust me, I can tell you for a fact, this guy on Alpha Motivation Zero, you're not Alpha. This is coming from an Alpha. You're a zero is what you are. So she calls him out and she talks about the fact that it's, it's incredible to be childless. It's phenomenal to wake up and not have any kids, have sex with anybody you want, drink as much alcohol. All this shit she says, video goes viral, 50 million views on Twitter, right? Whatever the number is. Okay, so the average girl is gonna watch that and say what? That's right, screw that SDE. I also wanna drink and be able to be with any man. I don't wanna have any kids. Does anybody even wanna have this kind of responsibility in life? I wanna be free because we're equal as men. Screw them, I don't need them, great. Then you go read her memoir where she tells a story about when she was nine years old, at the age of nine, her brother she describes who was 22, I think they have six kids total, mom and dad, I think one was a car salesman, it was a good family, six kids. The older brother, 22, she calls him my second father, my first boyfriend, I was in love with him in a way of loving my older brother, but he was my world. He's going on a mountain hiking uh, uh, trip. His last words to her was, can I wait to see when I get back? The guy dies climbing a mountain while she's nine years old. 
he never comes back. Then when he dies, she says, my mom and dad lost it. The man I needed next was my dad. My dad, I didn't have my dad anymore because he lost his mind. I don't blame him. He says, in that moment, I realized the pain of losing someone I love. And secondly, I saw my dad, the pain he went through of losing his child. Of course, I want to have a hard time with yeah. commitment and wanting to have kids and get yeah. married. Do you blame her? Yeah. When you read this story, then you're like, okay, Chelsea, I understand. It's easy to troll her and it's easy for her to troll other men, but we don't know that story. So if somebody from the outside says, who's Patrick Bay David? Here's a rich guy, he's probably raised in a, you know, I remember there was a time in the third year, the insurance company, I was paying comp more than my competitors were. A rumor started circulating saying, Pat's linked to oil money. And you know what I did with that rumor? I ran with it. I said, you're right, I have oil money. <laughs> I can pay the kind of money you can't pay. I don't have oil money, man. Right? I worked at a 99 cent store in Inglewood by Great Western for 15 years, but I love that rumor. So I ran with it. So if somebody doesn't know your story, great. You can say what you can say. So if I face opposition, I tell them, how much you know about me? Tell me your story. Tell me about your upbringing. Why did you come to the conclusion of the opinions that you have today? Tell me. I remember when this happened, that, okay, great. Can I tell you why I came to this conclusion? Yes, here's mine. Is it fair that we have different reasons why we came to this conclusion? You had life-changing experiences, I did as well. How about we respect each other? Let me make my case to you, you make your case to me. Let's see if anybody can persuade the other person. You game with that? Let's have a civil conversation. So that's typically what happens when I face somebody that fully disagrees uh, with some of my views.